There had been a few previous publications that had suggested that using uh, organs from people uh, who had passed away from cardiac death may have increased chance uh, of recurrence of hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, so the goal of our study was really to look and see uh, if there was uh, indeed any difference in, in those patients uh, compared to those who have donation after brain death organs. Um, we, we have uh, one of the largest experiences in the world using donation after cardiac death uh, organs and therefore uh, we felt that we were adequately uh, able to answer that question. Um, there are a large number of people on the transplant list with primary liver cancers um, that pass away uh, waiting, waiting for transplanted organs. Um, so this has been one way we've been able to maintain one of the shortest wait lists in the country uh, in terms of waiting time uh, and get these people transplanted quickly. The main things we found in this study was uh, in comparing patients uh, with hepatocellular carcinoma or primary liver cancers that had had uh, donation after cardiac death versus donation after brain death organs. Uh, there was no significant difference in recurrence rates of hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, and so this was an important finding because uh, it shows that, um, you know, we're able to use these organs safely for these people um, that are dying on the wait list. Uh, and again, in doing so, able to keep our wait times uh, low so that a low number of people would progress uh, and drop off the list. This was a single center study involving uh, Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. Um, we've done almost 300 donation after cardiac death uh, liver transplants. So in doing that, we had a large number of patients uh, uh, to look at. Um, we had uh, uh, over 50 patients that had received these transplants uh, with a diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, and we've done almost 400 patients with hepatocellular carcinoma uh, total in our experience. So. Um, you know, and having those, we had adequate numbers uh, uh, to look at that from a statistical standpoint. Um, you, you know, uh, not that many centers have had that many donation after cardiac death transplants. So that was sort of one of the um, key things that we were able to do. The time period of this was looking uh, from 2002 until uh, 2013, um, so that we had adequate follow-up for all patients. Based on some of the estimates, people have, uh, uh, have previously shown that we could increase the donor pool by 10 to 15 percent um, through the use of donation after cardiac death organs. So, you know, while that's only 10 to 15 percent, that's, that's a large number of patients that potentially would not have received transplants uh, had we not used those. So, you know, I think one of the other concerns has been um, how to use these organs effectively. Uh, uh, you know, there again, there have been some studies saying in, in the really, really um, terminally ill patient that has uh, a primary diagnosis of liver failure, um, perhaps these are not the best organs to be used. And so that's um, sort of been one of the key reasons why I think it's important to show that in people with liver cancer uh, who are also on the list and dying, uh, perhaps that's the ideal population to use these organs in. In centers that have experience using it, that have had good results, um, I think the results are um, almost equivalent to using a donation after brain death organ. And I think, um, you know, if, it's a great way to, um, uh, to shorten your wait time and, and minimize, you know, the chance of, of your disease progressing while you're on the waiting list. Um, so we, we definitely uh, advocate for it uh, with our patients.